In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install the desktop version of the Raspberry Pi operating system, or previously called Raspbian, on a virtual machine with VirtualBox. So, first of all, you need to download the image for the Raspberry Pi operating system for the desktop version. So, just go on Google and type Raspberry Pi download, and you will get to the, so the software here, you will get to the software part of the Raspberry Pi website where you can first download the Raspberry Pi image for the Raspberry Pi board and if you go down, you will find the Raspberry Pi desktop for PC and Mac. So they change the website very frequently, so maybe the interface is not the exact same one, but you will easily find this Raspberry Pi desktop. So you click on download you get to a new page and you can here choose either to directly download or download from a torrent. So you can choose whatever method you want, save the file, and now, so this file is almost three gigabytes, so it's gonna take some time. So in the meantime, what you can do now is go, so go on Google again and type VirtualBox and go to the VirtualBox website. So we can install the software to create virtual machines and just download the latest version here so you click on download and then you can choose here Windows, Mac OS or Linux so depending on what operating system is running right now on your computer choose the appropriate version so for example Windows and then you can save the file this is an executable so you save the file and then here, okay, it's saved. You can click on the executable to launch the installation of VirtualBox. Okay, so now just install VirtualBox like any other software. And once the installation is done, just open VirtualBox and you will get the here VirtualBox Manager. So here I already have a few virtual machines as you can see, but you will have none if you just install it for the first time. So now the next step is to create a new empty virtual machine, configure this machine, and then put the image that we have downloaded for the Raspberry Pi operating system. So here you click on new, and then you can choose a name for the virtual machine. So let's name it Raspberry Pi, let's say OS, and maybe desktop. This doesn't really matter. This is just the name you are going to see here on the left. So the machine folder, yeah, you can modify if you want to. And then the type, you are going to change the type. You are going to choose Linux. Because the Raspberry Pi operating system is actually Linux. And here you are going to choose Debian 64-bit. Okay, so because the Raspberry Pi OS, actually before that, was named Raspbian. Okay, Raspbian is the previous name and is actually based on Debian. So Linux, Debian 64-bit and Next. So you have to allocate some RAM for the virtual machine. So what I recommend, so it really depends on your computer, okay? On my computer, I have 16 gigabytes, so this is quite good. I can allocate up to, let's say, six uh, gigabytes. What I recommend is if you can go minimum two, and best is at least four, okay? But if you have limited RAM, just go at two gigabytes if possible. And I click on next and I'm going to create a virtual hard disk now. Okay, so you can keep this option. So create VDI. Okay, next dynamically allocated. Yes, it's good. Next. And then you have to choose a size for the virtual disk. And by default here, they give me eight gigabytes, which is really not that much. So this also depends on how much space you have on your disk. Uh, I'm going to put 25, okay, 25 is a good value to get started with. So we can install the OS, we can install a few software, and we still have some room for other stuff. I click on create, and I have my virtual machine here. And now, so you select the virtual machine, you go on settings, okay, this is going for the, the this is the settings for that machine here. And one thing you are going to do is go on system, and then processor. So you can see here, for example, the RAM, you can change the RAM if you want to here. All the settings that you have set before, you can change them here. And one setting that we couldn't change during the uh, creation process, I don't know why, but 
This is the number of CPUs, okay? By default, you have just one CPU for the virtual machine. And with just one CPU, it might be quite slow. So you might want to increase this. On my uh, computer, I have four CPUs. So I'm going to put two CPUs. If you have eight, maybe you can put like two, three or four, depends, but at least two is a good value. Okay, you click on OK. And then let's go back to the settings again. And now I'm going to go to storage. So now I'm going to put the image that finally is downloaded. So at this point, if the Raspberry Pi operating system image is still not uh, downloaded, then you have to wait a little bit and then you can continue with this step. So you go on storage, controller IDE, and you see empty. So you click on empty and here you have optical drive and you have a disk symbol here. So you can click on this and you can click on choose a disk file. And then you can locate, so wherever your uh, .iso file were downloaded, just locate it and then you can just select it and click on open. And now you can see you have the Raspberry Pi OS image here on the uh, disk there. So you click on OK and now you can start the virtual machine. So I'm going to click on start. So of course, make sure you select it and click on start. OK, and they are going to ask you again the startup disk. So basically, this is the same as if you install a new operating system with a USB key or with a CD. You have to choose a startup disk and well, here. Here it is. So you might have to here uh, locate it again if needed, but once you have it there, you can click on start. And now, well, your operating system is started. So you can here, you use the arrow keys, okay? You have a limited time, okay? As you can see, you have a timer. Once you have moved with the arrow keys, you don't have the timer. And you go to graphical install. Okay, and now you are installing the operating system. Great, so you can configure the keyboard with uh, whatever keyboard you have. And I am going to go to French because I have a French keyboard. Continue. So you have to wait a little bit. Okay, and now they will ask you to partition the disk. So basically it will partition the virtual disk that you have created. So do not worry here, everything you are going to do with the disk and the partitions and everything will be done on the virtual disk that you have created. So if you make any mistake, well, you can just remove the disk and create a new one. That, that's not a problem. We're going to choose guided, use the entire disk and click on continue. So again, continue. Then you can choose to separate the home partitions and etc. But we are going to choose all files in one partition, which is fine to get started with. Okay, and here it shows you what it's going to do, which is pretty standard. Okay, an ext4 partition, which is usually the partition used for Linux systems, and then a swap partition of one gigabyte. So this is in case you use all the RAM. Okay, it's going to use a little bit of the disk. Uh, for that, so just ext4 and swap, that's good, that's the standard way to partition your disk. You have finished partitioning and you click on continue. So, okay, you can see here, write the changes to disk, you click on yes, and you continue. And then you wait a bit. So when you see copying data to disk here, it means it's going to copy the data Okay, to the virtual disk. Again, this is not the disk you are using for Windows or for Mac. This is the virtual disk on top of that. Okay, so this can take quite a long time. Okay, a few minutes at least. And then it will ask you to install the Grub bootloader on the hard disk. So you can click here, select yes and continue. And here you have to choose here so you can choose slash dev slash SDA, which is the partition, okay, that is created for uh, your operating system. So you click on continue and it's going to install the Grub bootloader. Okay, and finishing the installation, so almost done. And you can see now installation complete. Great. So you click on continue again. 
and now you can see system reboot so it's going to reboot and you get to the grub here debian new linux so you can just uh, leave it like this it's going to go automatically or you can press enter and now it's going to start the raspberry pi operating system and you can see welcome to the raspberry pi desktop and you get to the desktop great so now all you need to do is to finish the startup for the raspberry pi os like you would do on your Raspberry Pi uh, board directly. So you will choose a country, language, time zone, etc. Change the default password and update the software. So here you can click on next. Okay. And then so you have to choose your country. So I'm going to go to okay, France for me. And let's choose. I'm going to use the English language here. I click on next. And then you choose a new password, okay? Because as you can see, the default Pi user has the password Raspberry. And it's going to ask you a new password because, well, you don't want to keep the default Raspberry password that everyone knows. Okay, so you choose a new password, you click on next. And then, so update software. This is quite important to update, so don't skip this. Click on next and it's going to check for update and install all the updated packages that it has found. So again, this can take quite some time. So you will have to wait a bit more. Okay, great, system is up to date. Click on OK and then setup complete. So it will ask you to restart. Okay, so all the new settings will take effect. So you click on Restart and it's going to restart again. And here you can press enter or just wait a few seconds. And you get back to the Raspberry Pi operating system desktop. And now it is fully installed and set up. And one thing here, so I'm going to go full screen and you can see I still have the same window size. So you can click here on the menu icon, click on preferences screen configuration and then so you have your screen here you click on configure screens and then i have virtual one and the resolution so this is 800 by 600 okay this is the resolution we have here so you can choose whatever resolution here you have many resolutions choose the one that is close to uh, the one of your computer so i'm going to choose let's say um, that one Click on OK. OK, and now it's much better. Click on OK. And now you can start experimenting with your new Raspberry Pi OS desktop. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Raspberry Pi step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. Alright, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.